And finally, let's talk about filters. Okay, we can actually filter on attributes the same way that we might filter on anything else. Okay, so we can filter on, say, uh, the gender. So let's say that we only want to see... Ch -ch -ch. Okay, let's add this to our filter. And let's say that we only want to see females. Okay, so we can apply the filter. And all of a sudden, these two will be highlighted and we'll have all of their data there. Okay, we can also say we're going to filter all of the males. Okay, same thing. And we can even search and so on and so forth. Right? And we can see all the, all the data in one place if we want to. Okay, so these are, are some of the other capabilities. You can actually start to filter things based on the attributes associated with a node. So now, as nice as this is, um, and as, as helpful as this can be, the truth is that most of the networks that we'll actually be interested in will be a good deal larger than anything we could really build by hand. Okay, and this is another one of the strengths of Cytoscape. Cytoscape really lets you uh, pull in data from online databases and process it. So I want to give you a sense, a little bit of a sense of what that's about as well. Okay, so we're going to say goodbye to our little test network for now. Okay, we'll come back and we can always just destroy the network, okay, and say goodbye to it. Now, keep in mind, you want to make sure that if you've made any adjustments that you care about, that you go and you, uh, you export it, okay, into whatever format that you, that you want to, okay, or make sure that you save your Cytoscape session. And but before we move on, that's really important to say, Cytoscape saves everything in a session, okay, and so our current session is test underscore session dot CYS. Okay, so if you want to save basically the state of your working desktop, which would be your network views, your networks, all of the things that you've put together, th that's how you would do it, okay, and it creates a CYS file, which is your Cytoscape session file. Okay, so now let's take a look at how can we pull data in here in a way that will let us um, analyze some things that are a, a little more uh, a little more advanced, a little more complicated, and certainly larger than anything we would want to do by hand. Okay, the, the the answer is there are many ways to do this, but we're going to take a look at pulling in a network from a web service. Okay, there are a few different clients that we can use. Right, let's use the Pathway Commons web service client. Okay, and what it's going to ask you to do is it's going to ask you for sort of what organism would you like to pull in, okay, and so our options are human, mouse, rat, okay, and w we may talk about some of these. Some of these are fairly um, well known. The C. elegans uh, worm is actually really famous. Uh, it's been mapped. We'll talk about that quite a bit. Um, what we'll pull down today is something reasonably small, okay, so that it's quick, just so you can get a sense. Let's pull in the, pardon me, not the fruit fly, let's pull in the P53 protein interactions from a mouse, okay, so P53 is actually a pretty well-known uh, protein. It works, um, to suppress tumors, okay? So in humans, if uh, something like 50% of the cancers actually um, are related to the fact that P53 is inactive, meaning it's not, it's not doing its work as a suppressor, okay? So, um, so interactions with P53 have been studied quite a bit in, hu bit in humans and uh, even in other species as well. So let's, let's pull in these protein interactions uh, for the mouse. Okay, so we're going to say search. Okay, and it'll pull in a whole bunch of things and it'll, it'll give you, you know, lots of different readings. Okay, let's pull in P53 mouse. Okay, it's matching 96 interactions. Okay, and they're all physical interactions. When you do this for a human being, you'll actually get all kinds of things. You get a ton of data, um, and it's just it's a little bit too much for this tutorial. But l let's take a look at what we get from P53 for a mouse. 
Okay, um, you can pull in either a simplified binary model or the full model, okay? We'll pull in the full model. This is small enough where we'll sort of get away with this. Okay. And then you can just say retrieve interactions. Okay, this should pull down all of that information. And you'll see that we have a new network called P53 Mouse. Uh, now, because this is the first time that we've done this, it might be a little bit upsetting because we don't see anything here. Okay, that's really nothing to worry about. We have to actually create a view. Okay, so we right click on the network and we say create view. And it'll pull in something for us that looks a little bit like this. Okay. Um, at this point, we're probably, because we're going to be doing um, some visualization work, we'll probably want to do things like hide the data panel, give us a little bit more room. We'll want to uh, hide the results panel. And if it lets us, we'll pull this back just a little bit. Okay, now all of a sudden we've got a lot more room here. Let me move this out of the way. And um, we see that we've got a you know, fairly complicated network to work with. It's got 155 nodes, 208 edges. Probably not something we would necessarily want to do by hand. Okay. So what we probably want to start with is let's see what kinds of visualizations we can use to get a handle on this. Let's try circular. Let's see what circular looks like. Okay. Um, that's pretty interesting what we have there, right? We um, We've got something that's clearly a center. This looks a little bit like a core of interactions, and this might be something that we might call a periphery. So we've got a lot of structure, even with circular. Okay, but just to give you a sense of what Cytoscape can do, we have a, a lot of visualization options. Okay, um, these these visualizations are actually pulled in from uh, YED. Okay, so. Uh, these should look rather familiar. Cytoscape has its own layouts, okay, and there are way too many to talk about in this tutorial, but there are certainly ones that could be useful, okay. Uh, a few a few that I like are spring embedded, okay, which will produce a sort of a structure that looks like this, okay, and um, again, with the visualization at this scale, what we're really doing is sort of trying to understand the data visually. So um, this is a place to experiment. You may want to try a bunch of different things. Okay, that's all, you know, that's, that's part of what we're doing. That's part of one of the strengths of this. In addition to the layouts, we also may want to change the we may not like this, the visual properties of this, okay? So we have other styles that we can apply, okay? And you can just sort of roam through them and see if they tell you the types of things that you care about. Uh, I sort of like universe. Um, I think it, think it looks nice. And um, we can sort of drill in a little bit further then. Okay, so let's start to actually dig into this and see what we have here. All right. Uh, we can always zoom in by clicking the zoom in. Okay, and you'll see that you can start to see the nodes here. Okay, the node labels. And if we click here and let's get back our data panel. Okay, I'll pull him back a bit. Okay, we can start to, we'll select all the attributes. Okay, we can start to take a look at what these things are. Okay, so you can find out lots of uh, information about what this is. You can you know, find out all the things specific to the databases that we've pulled out. Okay, what type of entity it is. Okay, it's a protein. And you can start to learn about this network. Okay, so th this is the type of thing that makes Cytoscape really, really powerful. Okay, you can pull in data from the research community related to a specific animal that you study or a specific protein or um, some other thing of interest that you'd like to pursue. Pull it in and actually start to analyze it, start to visualize it, and really start to work with it. Okay, and as you can see, there's 
quite a bit of there's quite a bit of structure here, and if we had more time in the tutorial, we would, uh, you know, sort of explore it a little bit more. But this is really just to get you started in the types of things that you can do. Before we go, I want to show you one last thing. Uh, at the Cytoscape is a great product. Um, it's it's very handy to use. But uh, there are times where you want to do something in another tool, okay? um, or you want to incorporate a tool into the function of Cytoscape. That's where plugins come in. Okay? The Cytoscape plugins are really helpful. Okay? I pulled in a few that will actually help us to analyze networks. Okay? So for example, if we want to analyze this network, we can come here say analyze network right we're going to treat this as a directed network right so we say okay right and then it'll give us a whole bunch of uh, statistics things that we've cared the things that you know we care about right so it'll give us nodes it'll give us the uh, average number of neighbors uh, we can talk about in-degree distributions and out-degree distributions and all these types of things. So this is the type of thing that you would, you know, want to pull in. So you can actually, the plugins actually let you extend the functionality. And the community in Cytoscape has created many of these. Okay, so these are really handy to know. This one in particular is pretty handy given the types of things that we want to do. Uh, no, we don't need to uh, yes, we don't want to click yes. Okay, um, but for our class, specifically for our class, you'll see that we've created a plugin called uh, WJ Tools, which includes a bunch of things. And the big one is that it lets you convert this network to the pagic.net format. This will be important because this will actually let us pull networks that we pull in from Cytoscape and actually manipulate them with PAGIC and other tools that are PAGIC compliant. Okay, so if we click this, it's going to ask you where you want to save it. Okay, I tend to save these things in our class file. So if I go here, and I'll just type export.net. Okay, and when I say save, it says the file was successfully written. Let's just check that out. We see that we do have export.net. If I open it with Notepad++, okay, we will see that this is the .NET format. And uh, explaining what this format is and what all these numbers and things mean will actually be the content of our next tutorial. So thank you very much, and um, I'm running out of batteries. So it looks like it's time to go.